Welcome back to my channel. Today we're in my favorite room, the kitchen. I had some different things that I need to get done in the kitchen today, so I thought we could hang out and do it together. So one of the things I have to do is store some of the things that I have dehydrated in my dehydrator. So these peppers aren't dry yet and that's okay. I'm gonna set them aside here. But um, these are all of the Korean peppers that I've gotten recently. Um, I keep them in this jar. And actually I got these, um, everyone knows what these are, these um, silica gel packs that keep everything nice and dry. I got a huge bag of them on Amazon for just a couple bucks. So I'll just put those peppers in there and hope they all fit. I'm gonna have to start um, blending them down here obviously very soon. Um, but for right now, that's fine. And then I actually made cute little labels to go on each of my jars so I know what's in each one. So that's my Korean peppers. And then I have these dried tomatoes. There are a variety of different tomatoes in my garden. Here's my dried tomatoes. I have a ton of dried tomatoes, um, but these are the ones that were um, that are larger that aren't the tiny cherry tomatoes. So we'll just load those up. And those also have the silica gel packet in there. Um, pretty soon, I'm gonna actually blend these down into tomato powder, um, but I haven't had time to do that yet. So I'll just go ahead and put them, oh, almost let that sneak in. That is a scotch bonnet pepper. That would not be good in my tomatoes. Um, so I'll store that separately. And there's the dried tomatoes. Now, um, typically these don't get so messy and sticky, but they obviously have recently. So I think I'm gonna run these through the dishwasher today. The dishwasher's already going, but um, when the dishwasher's done, I'll load those into the dishwasher and they'll be nice and clean for whatever goes in the dehydrator next. So this next one is definitely my favorite snack lately. It is seafood salad. If you love it as much as I do when you go get sushi or when you're at the grocery store, this recipe that I found and the ingredients that I found to me are actually better than the sushi restaurant. Um, and it's got some really good healthy ingredients in there as well. So um, I'll put links in the description box for where to actually buy the seafood salad or seafood, seaweed salad, um, and then you can get it for yourself and you can try the recipe. Um, also, I found this recipe on a blog. Usually I'll change a recipe when I find it to fit the way that I like to um, eat it, but for this recipe, I really hardly change anything. So uh, thank you very much to the person who took the time to put this recipe on their blog. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and pull together all of the ingredients. Um, here's the seaweed salad that I already rehydrated. It comes dried in packets. I don't have any left actually right now because this was the last of them. And um, this much seaweed salad <laughs> will probably last me about a week. Hey Sophie. Um, so I will um, typically uh, soak it in cold water and then I'll strain it and then I'll actually leave it to continue uh, straining in the fridge for a day or two so that it doesn't have extra water in it and so that's what I have here um, and now I'll just go ahead and add all of the ingredients and that's what we'll do together with Sophie. <laughs> So here's a good kitchen tip from me to you. Um, I got these zip tops um, from my um, sister-in-law Meg and um, her husband Dave, so thank you very much for these. Um, what I actually do, which I highly recommend, is um, when you have like an onion that you've cut, you have a bulb of garlic, um, I also have like a jalapeno pepper that I've cut, and ginger. Oh, and a green onion. So a lot of things that I need for this recipe, they're already all in here. And a lot of these things are, you know, just things that you use frequently um, when you're cooking. So for me, they're all in this one little thing. It keeps them very fresh. I mean, you can see this onion isn't even like dried out um, as much as it typically would be when you store it. Um, so I just keep 
those things in there so when I'm cooking I can just get this one little bag out it's got onions garlic um, peppers and then I even have this little thing of parmesan cheese because um, it keeps that fresh as well so those are all together in there and here are some of the first ingredients that we need so as far as this recipe goes I'm fairly certain that the reason it's so good is because most of our because the garlic and the ginger is grated it's not diced and i wouldn't have thought that that really made a difference but i found it definitely did so i'm gonna grab my grater this is one of my favorite favorite kitchen utensils um it i got it at the dollar tree it is just a little handheld grater i use it all the time so we'll go ahead and um you don't want to overdo it on the garlic with this recipe i um love garlic you know just as much as any garlic lover but because it's fresh and you're not cooking it it can be extremely extremely intense and very unexpectedly <laughs> intense at that so um i recommend i mean this is for this whole thing and even that's probably going to be like a little bit too much so we'll see um how it goes and then ginger um i'm kind of kind of eyeball it and take about this much again i'm also pretty sure that the reason this recipe is so good is the fresh grated ginger this is not something that i typically would have in my kitchen um you know prior to a couple of years ago now i always have it it is a really great sort of secret ingredient and um the flavor is just incredible and of course it's super good for you as well so we have our garlic and our ginger and now i'm looking i don't think this green onion's big enough so we'll save it for another day and i'll have to get a whole one out of the fridge and i'll go ahead and cut that open i hate kind of peeling all this off of it but here we go and this actually right here is probably pretty close to the amount that i'm going to use i'm probably going to also use that as well and i don't measure too much when i'm cooking <laughs> i kind of eyeball everything um and that's what i'd recommend doing for this recipe as well depending on how you feel about the ingredients but don't say i didn't warn you about the garlic because you don't want too much of that all right and then we need to peel the brown stuff off the garlic sometimes i'll just do that with a knife but um lately i've just been using a grater uh i didn't mean grater i meant peeler and i can't find my peeler so i will use this little paring knife and that part is dry we'll cut that I always cut myself in the, in the kitchen, so I have to be so careful. Um, and it's always because I'm in a hurry, so I need to just slow down. I cut myself, like, I don't know if you can see that. I cut myself in the other day in the kitchen. Ah! I need to be a lot more careful and not be in such a hurry. I really wish that I had the peeler, because then I could have just not risked cutting myself here. But... Oh my god this already smells so good ginger and garlic together if you've never cooked um with those two ingredients together you need to get on that they are so good together and if you make this seaweed salad i promise you you're going to love it you know if you like seafood seaweed salad um all right i'll put my little scraps over here always save my little scraps for the compost pile all right so there's our ginger um actually i want a little bit more so i will we'll just hang on to this because when we use the grater we'll just leave the brown part okay so um that is the majority and i actually do um i pull up the recipe whenever i make this because i'm always afraid to forget something there is a fair amount of ingredients in this recipe but it's worth it so like i said um it will be in the description box here but the website is asiancaucasian.com which is super cute here's a recipe so i'm gonna have that up and 
it's telling us that we need to scroll a lot. Okay, so we need soy sauce, mm, sugar, okay. Whoops, motion sensor light. Okay, so I've got my recipe up anyway, and I will just go ahead and start grating all my ingredients into the bowl. Um, I need to start using gloves because my fingers are going to smell like garlic for the next eight days. But So as I said, could you mince this? Yes. I am almost a thousand percent certain that the reason this recipe is so good is because everything is grated. And just a tip, if you have a grater like this or you end up getting one um, like I got from the dollar store, when you're done using it, always rinse it like right away because all these little thingies will um, get stuck in there and then it will be like really difficult to wash them out. So it's easier to just give this a quick rinse when you're done using it and then it will be much easier you know, you run it through the dishwasher, or if you hand wash it or something, obviously it would be ideal to wash it right away. This is when I wish that you guys had smell low vision because this garlic and ginger together <laughs> smells so good. It smells so good. And actually I was gonna show the finished seaweed salad before um, I started the recipe, but I forgot that I finished eating it yesterday. I ate it all. So um, just in time for me to make more. And then I usually just tap it on the bowl to get as much off as I can. And I have my cute little spatula to get all that. So as I'm looking at this, this looks uh, to be about the right amount of the ingredients that I would um, typically use here. I've made this recipe probably five or six times so far. So I have a really good idea of how I like it. I want to say, I'll have to check, but I think in that recipe, they have you putting cucumbers in there. I did that one time. I didn't care for it. It didn't last as long in the fridge because like water kept coming out of the cucumbers and it got all watery. It was not good. So don't recommend the cucumbers. And even still, you know, it's just good with the pure seaweed in my opinion. Okay, so you've got that. I might add a little more ginger uh, here in a bit, but for now we'll stick with what we've got. I will go ahead and cut up the green onions. I'm not sure if this recipe called for green onions. I don't think it does, but um, I've found that I like them in there because it doesn't have an onion component it just has the ginger and the garlic and I love onions of all kinds so I put the green onion in there but again I, I can't remember if the recipe called for it but we'll see here in a second okay so another thing this recipe calls for rice vinegar I am out of rice vinegar I've been out of it for a while but I actually really love vinegar just in general so I use white vinegar in this recipe it really comes through really strong vinegar flavor I like that a lot so I'm going to use white vinegar we'll get a little bit of that in here and that's enough L last time I made it which was like last weekend I think I didn't put in quite enough vinegar and oil and I had to go back and add more and that was kind of annoying. So now I'm putting in a little bit more than I think I need. Okay, so that's in there and we need soy sauce and sesame oil. All right, so here is our soy sauce and sesame oil so you know think of like a salad dressing situation i like about equal parts oil and vinegar i also absolutely love sesame oil oh my god this smells so good okay so we've got that in there um recipe does not call for it but here's my korean pepper flakes which are, I, I'm a little sensitive to spicy. These are not too spicy. Um, this is just actually a repurposed container. Um, I bought a whole bag of them, so they're in the closet. And then obviously, since I've been growing them and saving them for my garden, hopefully I'll never have to buy them again. 
It's not needed, but I usually do just the teeniest, tiniest little pinch of salt. Um, just kind of balance out the flavor. Um, I saw in the recipe it called for sugar. I don't think I've been adding sugar the last couple times I made it, and it tasted fine. Um, looks like it also calls for mirin. If I had mirin, I'd put it in there, but I don't. Um, uh, oh my god, that's everything. Okay, so, well, actually, okay, so there's other things I add. So we need sesame seeds. Here are my sesame seeds, which I need to fill up this container, and I think I'll do that now. I, again, love sesame seeds, so I put a lot in, and I buy a lot of them, and I use them all the time. I, like, put them in soup. I, like, put them in ramen. Oh, my God, sesame seeds. Sesame. I love it all. All right, so I'm going to set that aside so I can refill my sesame seeds. Um, and then the other thing, which I'm pretty sure is in the recipe notes, but this stuff is fantastic. If you don't have this in your house, you do need to get this. If you don't like spicy, only use a very small amount at a time. So you'll see here about how much I'm about to use. Um, like, I don't know if you saw that, that's gotta be like somewhere between a half and a full tablespoon teaspoon teaspoon um, that's all I use but it adds all the flavor it's um, sambal olek fresh or ground fresh chili paste I'm pretty sure it's mostly like chilies and garlic stuff's fantastic man I don't know what they're putting in here but it's so good anyway that is everything we need so now we just mix in the seaweed And then just like with everything, you want to give it a smell to make sure it smells good to you, to tell you if you've got enough of the different ingredients. I'll bet you that garlic is kicking if you are making this along with me, which who doesn't love garlic? But man, you do not need a lot. You do not need a lot. Oh, okay, Um, it's missing a little something. I don't know, you know, I maybe, do I get, maybe the sugar? I don't know, it smells like it's missing something. I'm gonna put in a couple more drops of soy sauce and a little bit of sugar. So that's all the sugar I'm putting in. And then I actually portion this um, so that I can grab it as a quick snack while I'm working. And I got these really great deli containers, uh, where else, on Amazon, that allow me to portion out into smaller containers. So this was the larger size of those. Um, I'm just gonna go ahead and wash this one and just portion this into the smaller containers. Let me grab some of those. All right, so I can't find all my little tiny ones. Hang on. I don't know where all my small ones that are like this size, so it's gonna be these, but this is definitely more than I would eat at a time. I typically would eat this much or less at a time, but we can't find the containers, so. And just for convenience, I'm gonna do it this way. So like I said, I had put cucumber in here once and it just got so, so like watery and kind of slimy like too quickly. This will be fresh in the fridge for at least a week if you can get it to last that long. I usually eat this up within a week. Um, that's why I make so much at a time. Um, and it's hopefully better for me than a bag of chips that I would normally have. So that's a win. I know they say that the seaweed salad is good for you, but I just know there's a whole gang of salt in here. 
So. Also, when it's in the fridge, you know, I'm gonna let this marinate. I'm not gonna eat this, maybe not even today. Um, I'm gonna let it marinate. But when it's in the fridge, I'll usually turn the containers upside down and right side up a couple times because it is marinating in this wonderful sauce that we've made. So. Oh, I wish you could smell this. It is just unreal. It's like my mouth is watering. It's so embarrassing. <laughs> All right, so we'll throw our lids on there. And now my healthy little, maybe not healthy, I don't actually care, snack is going to be ready for me this week. And even though I'm out of this, it's auto delivered by Amazon every month. And the next batch comes on Friday, just in time for me to have more. And next, my last project for today. Um, I don't usually like to do this in the kitchen, but I did need to start some seeds um, so that they're ready to go out in the fall. So I've done a lot of different seed starting methods. I still like this one the best, even though it doesn't always work the best. It's the most cost effective. It's the easiest, and if you haven't watched my other videos on seed starting, um, my biggest tip for these is to put a little bit of vinegar in the water that um, you're using just when you're starting out. It will kill off any um, fungus gnats and any sort of fungus, and that in and of itself has helped me start a lot more seeds this way. So um, I'm starting out some celery, some lemon cucumbers, and some Korean tomatoes. Um, apparently these Korean tomatoes are really great sauce or paste tomato so I'll be able to get these outside um, just when it starts to cool off enough and then hopefully I'll get a nice good crop of tomatoes this fall As far as the celery, I've heard it's very difficult to start from seed, but since it's an interesting pink celery, I figured I had to give it a try. And then I've also got mixed reviews on the lemon cucumbers, so I'll make sure to report back and let you know how they are. Thanks as always for watching and I'll see you in the next video.